You are listening to 17 Karat K-Pop, the podcast that's a little bit of everything with a K-Pop twist. From pop culture critiques to the history of K-Pop to interviews with people in the K-Pop industry and K-Pop artists themselves, to concert and album reviews, to a deep dive into the discographies of different K-pop artists, to K-pop news updates, to stories about the music industry more broadly. This show tries to cover everything about K-pop and K-pop as it applies to the larger music and concert scenes. Visit 17karatkpop.weebly.com for more information about the show. That's 17-C-A-R-A-T-K-P-O-P dot W-E-E-B-L-Y dot C-O-M. Hello everybody and welcome back to 17 Karat K-Pop. Happy New Year to you all. I've decided to switch things up for the format of the show this year, so it'll still be roughly the same amount of content you'll get from me each week, but just stretched out in terms of when you get it. So instead of having two hour-ish long episodes each week, I'm going to try releasing each segment of the show as its own episode, and you'll get a new shorter episode from me every day of the week, sometimes a bonus episode on weekends. Maybe you're just into the stay tuned segment of the show where I talk about trends in the music and concert industry more broadly and then apply them to K-pop. If you want more just K-pop specific news, those will be separate headline themed episodes with my yays and nays of the week. Song recommendations, album reviews, those will get their own standalone episodes. Other stories, miscellaneous stuff that I have to talk about on the show you know, your history lessons, your backstories about certain K-pop milestones, the deep dives into artist discographies, those will be longer episodes, but I'll just say that each segment will be its own episode, a lot shorter than usual, but some of them will be pretty long still. I'll have in-depth interviews still, just there's so much content I want for the show, and I want to have it become more of a regular part of your daily life, hopefully, so... I hope you enjoy the new format. Feel free to give some feedback, leave a comment, 17karatkpop.wibbly.com. And without further ado, let's get to today's episode topic, which is my review of Culture Humanity. Culture Humanity was a free live stream concert event full of SM Entertainment artists. It could be watched on TikTok, YouTube, etc. And it usually isn't free. You usually have to pay to access SM Entertainment live stream events, but this New Year's Eve one was made free to access for all. And my overall review, if you want more eloquently put thoughts, ideally, then you can check those out in my actual full-length review of the show, which is on 17karatkpop.weebly.com right now. If you click on the blogs page, it's one of the latest entries, if not the latest entry, as of recording time and publishing time for the show. To differentiate what I say on the show compared to my review, instead of just saying it verbatim, I'm going to dive into some things specifically here that I found most positive and most negative, but my overall takeaways from the show are in that review. 17 items to discuss in total, which I did intentionally, 13 pros and 4 cons from the night. 13 was also an intentional number, only 17 fans will probably appreciate that, but whatever. The four cons of the night let's start off with. First of all, no BOA. There was no mention of BOA, not how she has helped pave the way for other SM Entertainment artists. Yeah, I said it. There, She wasn't mentioned at all, and I do think part of that was probably due to the recent controversies that we'll get into in another episode coming out this week. So maybe it was just the negative headlines associated with her lately that caused SM Entertainment to not have her involved. Maybe she just wasn't available, but... I'm still reminded of the fact that Boa didn't even get her own light stick until 2018, 18 years after her debut. And it was late 2018 too, I remember thinking it was around Christmas time of 2018 and finally Boa got her own light stick. So, I don't know how, uh, I guess I should have expected her to not be involved in the show, but it's still disappointing. Also disappointing was Shiny not being there officially for a reunion performance of sorts, which kept getting teased because they kept showing between different acts this Shiny promo video that was kind of a montage of all the different Shiny eras, and it was really exciting and it was a special trip down memory lane and I was getting hyped up, and it ends with a screen that says Shiny is back in 2021, and then nothing. And then it would just move on to the next act that would be irrelevant to whatever they just said about Shiny. So you would expect me to just be excited that they just revealed, yes, Shiny will make a comeback in 2021, but 
it felt so anticlimactic to me to have that build up video shown multiple times and then nothing. No further teasing what that means, when that means something will happen, just just overall a recap of Shiny's music and then suddenly nothing. No release or teaser for a new song, no, mer I don't know, merch release? They could have really marketed that part of the show better, I think, and it was just disappointing because it led to nothing. Number three, there were moments of the show that admittedly were a little not as uh, polished as SM Entertainment artists tend to be. There were some older performances. I'm not saying I don't understand. I'm just saying from a more objective critic critic's review of the show, I would say that there were some performances that just lost their luster a little. The dancing was not as in sync as it used to be when those songs first came out. The singing, some moments it was very clear someone was lip syncing or at least heavily relying on the backing track. They forgot to kind of move their mouth and show they were singing. So there were moments like that where clearly it was, um, it was not, um, 100%, they weren't at their 100%. Not that that made it less enjoyable, but just, again, from an objective critic's point of view, I would have to point that out as a critique. But overall, obviously, it was still fun to watch. And as I write in the review on the site, something about some of their slip-up moments made the show more endearing because... I don't know, it was just a fitting end to 2020, a year full of disorder and throwing things together last minute, and so for this show to be kind of seemingly thrown together last minute, and for them to not carry it out perfectly then, it just makes sense, and makes the show feel more forgivable, and it's okay we relate what a year it's been, you know? And the transitions between acts were a little random, and so the thrown together nature of the show actually added to its appeal somehow after the year we've had. I try to explain that on the site. So those were my four issues with the show. No boa, no shiny, but it was teased, but then nothing came of it. Backing tracks that were obvious and other moments that were a little, uh, got pulled back the curtain too much on the show, I guess you could say. And the awkward transitions. In just in general, the lineup didn't have a clear order, so... I would be watching NCT and then suddenly I'm watching Red Velvet, for example, and nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I would have liked to uh, better schedule, you know, a bathroom break and stuff. I wanted to know who was coming next, and it was so random going back and forth between acts multiple times that I never knew what I was about to miss, which is great uh, to keep people glued to the screen, but also I would have preferred to know. Highlights of the night. Number one. Kai was in his element, from his casual boy-next-door clothes to his signature body rolls and other signature dance moves. He was just totally in his element. He takes on this new confidence when he's performing that I love to see. Number two, Taemin. Everything about Taemin's performance, he performed Criminal and Idea back-to-back, -back, and he really channeled his alter ego as he did. Taemin, as I've talked about at length on the Taemin dedicated episodes of the show, is so great at slipping into this alter ego, this evil side of his personality. He's playing several roles of different characters, basically in his subconscious. We won't go into the storyline again now, but he keeps that storyline, he brings it to life with every performance and reminds you of that alter ego storyline of his. It entices you to rewatch the music videos with every performance. It, he just has such a compelling stage presence and really turns into someone else as he's performing. And this time it was no different, and I was very impressed with that. Number three, Kenta who I admittedly hadn't heard much music from before. I wasn't as big of a fan of him as I am with more recent, like, third and fourth generation K-pop stars, but I'm very impressed. He had his really smooth vocals, and he premiered this new song that's not released yet called Cough Syrup. It's a very smooth R&B bop, and I'm very excited for its release. So very well done, because I think he created a lot of new fans. As did, hopefully, Super Junior, who had this really cool performance with a new song, and it was in the dark, and they had these these handheld lights. So essentially, I mean, you had to watch it to truly get why it sounds, it sounds, it looked a lot better than I'm making it sound, but it was very cool. The lights were off, and all you would see is their, their hands moving while holding these lights. So it was like a light show in a weird way, and it looked very artistic and not lame as I'm describing it, trust me. <laughs> Number five, the use of AR technology and 3D elements 
to really immerse viewers in a show. SM Entertainment really has what I wrote about on the site as SM Magic, which I refer to as like the mix of next level marketing, high tech, use of 3D elements and things like that to immerse people in a show, and world building. SM Entertainment's magic, SM Magic to me refers to that mix of savvy marketing that is ahead of the game and world building. These immersive settings, these giant larger than life backgrounds and props and really cool elaborate costumes, it's such a production, every performance of an SM Entertainment artist. So it just is so, such an escape to watch and it demands your full attention. So that's the multifaceted SM Magic that was at play and definitely earns a spot on this list, especially for those 3D elements, especially when TVXQ performed Keep Your Head Down in a longtime classic bop that I forgot was so catchy. They performed among these 3D flames and helicopters, and it was a whole war zone scene, and it was very immersive the way that different images popped off the screen. Number six, NCT kept coming back, and I... Frankly, I tuned in for NCT more than any of the other acts because if you've, you're a long-time listener, you know my, my alt groups, NCT and Seventeen, uh, are ones I talk about a lot and get excited for the most. Anyway, so NCT was there again and again. So I know I just cr criticized the haphazard lineup order, but now I part of me kind of likes it because kept being pleasantly surprised that NCT was back and I didn't expect to see them again. It was like, oh, well, hello, you're back. And that's the joy of having so many members and subunits is because they're all, they were all treated like separate artists in the lineup, each subunit. So NCT Dream started the show with Raiden. We were riding into 2021 and that was a great vibe to start the show with. And it just kept coming. Make-A-Wish and 90s Love, Although I wish there had been a resonance and all the NCT members had come together for that, but maybe they didn't because it did feel right without Taeyeon, which is my number seven on the list for things I liked about the show, because Taeyeon was still there. In the pre-recorded segments that were recorded earlier than the other pre-recorded segments, Taeyeon was still there in Super M and NCT performances, and I didn't expect to see him at all during the show, so that was nice for fellow Taeyeon biased people like myself, but he was not there for filming of the the newer pre-recorded uh, New Year's concert segments because Taeyeon is temporarily on a hiatus. His herniated disc is acting up and so he's taking time to rest and recover from that injury. So wishing him all the best and I hope he really gets time to rest and that isn't just a cover. I truly hope he is getting time to just rest for a month or two, at least. He just definitely deserves it, being the leader of so many people. I can't even imagine. He's, it's like a teacher keeping track of, uh, like, what, 22 other students and counting? So I don't know how he does it, but he deserves a rest for sure. Anyway, but I was happy to see him there in a way, and everyone really covered for him in a way that that made sense. Mark covered for him in Punch, and that was followed by a special moment between Mark and Johnny, so we love to see it. Number eight, Wendy is back. She finally rejoined the other Red Velvet members after that long year without her, so welcome back, Wendy. It was great to see you. Number nine, the Easter eggs in set designs. If you know me, you know that I love talking about the SM Entertainment music video universe and how different artist storylines connect to each other's in different ways and anyway. So all those theories still had little Easter eggs nodding to them throughout the show. Like the fact that artists sang inside that, that lit up uh, box of sorts, the outline of a square made of lights. You know, you know it when you see it. It's a key iconic set design that is a part of different SM artists' videos that tie them together. I also noticed a little nod, potentially, to Taemin's Move music video. Because remember, a big part of that story is the fact that there are these walls that are covered with a collage of sorts of newspaper headlines and wanted poster type ads and stuff. And though a collage of similar headlines were a part of the background during Taemin's performance. And Taemin didn't perform the song Move, but he did channel a dar darker alter ego from other songs of his, so I thought that might have been an intentional uh, detail there. Number 10, the new versions that debuted of classic songs. 
Espa's winter performed, it's not a classic yet, but it will be. She performed Lehigh's lines on the song Yours. Her version I really like, and it actually helped me gain an appreciation for Espa. So I'm very excited for their future, and I am I love the remix. I also love the remix of You and Village, Baek Hyun San. Mark jumped on to a verse of that, and I really want the studio version of the Mark and Baek Hyun version now. And even when it wasn't a remix of a song, it felt like it. It felt new and fresh, the version that they performed, in a way that I just thought happened really naturally. For example, with Ten singing his song The Riot, the way he was able to actually show off his singing ability when he normally shows off his dancing ability more was a very cool departure. And so that's what I mean when I say that songs felt like they were given new life during these performances because they highlighted different strengths that the artists have that we didn't we don't normally get to see a spotlight on. So it gave so many SM Entertainment artists individual chances to shine like that and it led to me greater appreciating Ten's level of talent as well as other artists of course. So I think that was just a very smart thing for SM to do because maybe you tuned in for NCT but then you came away loving Winter's vocals or you tuned in for Espa and you came away loving Ten's vocals and so you could gain appreciation for different SM artists. That's again the SM magic at work because you have the mix of smart marketing because they're all promoting each other that night, singing on each other's songs and stuff, mixed with the SM magic of world building because all the artist storylines are also connected. I also just want to have a moment to say I really appreciate DJ sets that were part of this show. They had three of them and I, I just love watching DJs perform because they fascinate me. They're up there and they look like they're having the time of their life and they make it look so easy and I wonder if it is. Like I'd love to see behind the, behind the wall that they're standing behind. I'd love to actually physically watch what are their hands doing as they DJ because they could just push a button and that's it and we we have no idea ever. I'm not discrediting their talent when it comes to mixing songs. I'm sure they have that talent and they've made the songs, but live performance wise, I wonder what they're actually doing on stage. I'm just very curious, but they always look like they're having so much fun and it's so easy what they're doing and I wonder if it really is live. I don't know. Just throwing that out there, but that's what it makes me think about. So watching three different DJs perform was quite fascinating for me. Number 11, The Wardrobe. Taman's suit, like I said before, was really awesome. Red Velvet wore these really cute red and black plaid outfits. Wendy's was especially cute. It was like this dual length puffy skirt with the plaid top. Even outfits I wouldn't normally like, somehow they were able to pull off because I loved that it added to the overall vibe of different performances like NCTU with the retro colorful suits for Work It. I also love Taeyeon, the Barbie of SM Entertainment fashion with her hot pink fuzzy sweater and beret set and mini skirt and everything. I also loved her white floral dress. Taeyeon was just, she looked incredible. I loved Taeyeon's black hoodie and black, uh, Taeyeon from NCT's black hoodie and black leather pants from a Super M performance. And I think ultimately my favorite outfit from the night had to be what the backup dancers wore in Taemin's performance for Idea. They wore these really cute black ruffle dresses that were dual length. They were shorter in the front and longer in the back. And they came with these black leather knee-high boots. It was just such a cute look. So overall, 10 out of 10, give the stylist a raise. I loved the looks that night. Number 12, smart marketing as always. SM Entertainment knows how to slip in little promo for other artists slyly like they did when Baekhyun threw in a plug for his, his solo online concert January 3rd. He just said, you know, I've got another new show or new appearance coming up very soon and got to promote SM Entertainment's Beyond Live virtual concert experience while he did that. Things like that, moments like that. I'm like, I see what you did there and I respect it. And number 13, the opening and closing messages. What they were saying would probably come across as just corny and too much, too cheesy, not believable, but something about it this year was so needed. I loved this level of wholesomeness they brought to their whole ethos. It started with a video, of, the whole night started with a video of Lee Su Man, the founder of SM Entertainment, talking about the company's values and their motto, which I love. And I'm going to co-opt it for my New Year's resolution. Be kind, be humble, and be the love. 
Isn't that a great way to live life? And that's what he says he wants to put forward into the world. Be kind, be humble, be the love. Follow those three pieces of advice and you will do good in life. And I love that message. And that is what the opening video talked about is that SM Entertainment Company motto. And it was tied back to at the end because there was just this really cute, wholesome, sing-along style video. It was a montage of SM Entertainment artists singing a song about togetherness. Again, any other year it would be too cheesy for me, but the Disney-esque level of wholesomeness I really wanted after this trying year. Just them to sing about being hopeful for the future. They talked about things that showed they truly live by this motto of be kind and be humble and be the love talking about like mask wearing, for example, and socially distancing. I just love that promoting that stuff because Western artists, in case you've been living under a rock, have not been uh, the best examples about public health lately. And so I just love when they take it seriously and truly have this we're all in this together mindset. I wish more people did in the West, but I digress. And so I love that they had this uh, we'll get through this tough time together message. It was just the wholesomeness I truly wanted to see. And, of course, the whole video montage at the end had the word hope on the screen a lot during the song, and I'm touched. Three more details about that night that I want to note. First of all, congrats to Lee Soo Man because he was named fourth year in a row and the only Korean to be named for a fourth year in a row as one of Variety's 500 influential business leaders globally. So congrats to him for that. He maintains the title of the father of K-pop. Second thing worth noting is that the numbers are in and the amount of views that this Culture Humanity show got, 35.8 million from 186 countries. 35.8 million people tuned in from 186 countries around the world. I'd like to take a second to comment on all of the online discourse surrounding which event got more viewers, Big Hit Entertainment's online concert or this SM Entertainment one, comparing things like how Big Hit Entertainment's event you had to pay for, but it got more viewers allegedly versus the SM Entertainment event was free and streaming on more platforms than the Big Hit Entertainment one, yet got less viewers. And actually, we just don't know for sure, because first of all, the words views and viewers are not interchangeable. One has to do with actual number of streams and one has to do more with the streams coming out of one IP address. So there's just are some technical differences that can actually make a big difference in terms of how many individuals actually watched an event. So keep that in mind. And also that SM Entertainment revealed their number, but Big Hit has not officially, as of recording time, revealed how many people tuned in. Steve Aoki, one of the special guests, tweeted that it, the event got 50 million views, but I don't know where he got that number from. Because Big Hit Entertainment hasn't said anything about that. The 50 million number floating around out there seems to apply to BTS's Bang Bang Con online event that was a while ago, not the New Year's Eve event at all. So I think that's where he got it from, but I don't know. I don't think that's verifiable yet as of recording time. So I just want to be very clear here and also remind you all that it is a petty waste of time to debate which event got more viewers because who cares? If, if you enjoyed your New Year's Eve concert of choice, then congrats. Last interesting thing worth noting, the members of Super Junior during their set were talking about how it's been 60 years, but it's finally the year of the White Ox again or sometimes called year the metal bull or the gold ox or whatever, but it's it's an ox year. And I looked that up, and apparently it's pretty good for our future, so fingers crossed. It means that this will be a year where people focus a lot on the economy and their investments. No surprises there. Lots of countries are in a recession due to the pandemic. And also, though, it's going to be a year of resilience, stability, prosperity, and hard work that gets rewarded. So all of that sounds like very, very eerily relevant uh, things to strive for in the world now, given the circumstances. So that I just found interesting. It's the year of the ox, and that is supposed to be good and hopeful. So fingers crossed. That is my review of the show. To sum it up, really, SM Entertainment had just a really delightful show to watch. It was a fun way to ring in the new year with a hopeful tone that I will carry with me, being kind, being humble, and being the love. And the artists just got to channel their stage personas and show why they have fans in the first place. Every artist got their time to shine. 
it was a great smart marketing way between artists so that it really helped with the marketing for one another during the sets that they came together to do fresh twists on their old classics and they are all the artists promoted each other in impressive ways and made new fans out of old fans for their other artists from the same company free for us but actually it gave a lot of publicity to those artists so it pays dividends this event as well as just the world building that they had and the escapism through this show so overall really well done job thank you for making it free sm entertainment and uh, uh, thank you all for listening you can read the full review on the show site and until then i will i will talk to you soon we've got a lot of headlines and things i have hot takes on in the world of k-pop we will get to on tomorrow's show